are you someone who wants to grow this part of your forearm? The part of the forearm that is the Popeye part of the forearm? If you are and you're struggling to grow that area for whatever combination of reasons, this is the video for you. And to do that, we're gonna go over two major things. Number one is the anatomy of those muscles. The anatomy of those muscles can be a little bit complicated because there are a lot of muscles in the forearm and that can lead to a paralysis by analysis. Then the second thing is we're gonna translate that complicated anatomy into practice. And I'm gonna show you a bunch of different exercise options that you can do no matter what gym access you have. I'm also gonna show you a few options later on in the video that you've probably not ever seen before. So stay tuned for that. All right, so step one, the anatomy, I'm gonna make it super simple for you. We have two sort of major categories of muscles here. I'm gonna depict these muscles with this green rubber band. One category of muscle runs all the way from these forearm bones into all of the finger. This is called the flexor digitorum muscle. And when it contracts, it not only bends the wrist, but it also bends all the fingers. So this muscle gets a lot of action, right? Because it bends the wrist in any kind of wrist curl motion, but it also closes is the fingers. In other words, it's what allows us to hold on to things. Now, the second muscle here is called the flexor carpi ulnaris. Overly complicated name for muscle that kind of looks like this. And what you'll notice is that its attachment site over here doesn't actually run into the fingers. In other words, when it contracts, it bends the wrist, but it doesn't close the fingers like the first muscle we talked about. And in addition, pay close attention to where my index finger right here is. It sits slightly on the inside of the joint, meaning that it doesn't just bend the wrist. Obviously, it does because it sits over here, but it also does what's called ulnar deviation, meaning it bends the wrist side to side. So now how do we take this anatomy and put it into practice? Well, to put it really simply, all we need is some kind of resistance, whether it's dumbbell cable or machine, or even just body weight, that's trying to straighten our wrist against which these muscles need to bend our wrist. And in addition to target that second muscle group that kind of sits on the side, we need to have an exercise that's loading our wrist in this direction so that we can do that deviation thing in the opposite direction. So the first kind of exercise is just gonna be a wrist curl motion. This probably doesn't come as a surprise to many of you, but I have a few unique options that I think you might like a lot. The first, and this is my all-time favorite forearm motion, if there's any one motion that I would advise that you at least try, it's this one. All you're gonna do is you're gonna attach two D-handles to a cable and put the cable at the bottom of the rack. Because you're using D-handles, you can orient your palms wherever you want. This is part of why I like it so much. And having this freedom to move your arms seems like it's kind of a subtle thing, but it can actually make a world of a difference in terms of comfort and strength that you experience in these motions. So why is that? Well, you don't need to try Trust me, just take your wrist and turn it all the way one way as far as you can, and then try to curl it. It feels a little bit awkward. Now turn it all the way the other way. So palm toward your face, palm all the way away from your face. In either one of these extremes, i.e. if you're grabbing a straight bar here or a straight bar here, you're gonna be limited in how much you can actually bend your wrist and contract these muscles that we've been talking about. And so with this D-handle setup, you can basically just turn your palms where they're most comfortable and where you're strongest, which may look slightly different from person to person. So play around with the difference in where you like to direct your palms and then just do the wrist curls that way. Now, does this mean that doing a straight bar wrist curl is just a waste of your time or it's gonna explode your wrists and forearms? No, obviously not. And that's another great option for many of you who are totally comfortable doing that. So both of these options are great and both of them can be your bread and butter. If you're going to use a straight bar, again, I would suggest just putting the cable at the bottom of the rack, keeping your arms nice and loose and just doing the wrist curl that way. And of course, these aren't your only options. You could do these kinds of wrist curls with an easy bar, with a barbell, with a Smith machine, right? With dumbbells, there are so many different options. Don't limit yourself and just remember the principle of I need to bend my wrist against resistance and that's gonna cover at least that first muscle group that we talked about really, really well. Now, remember that second muscle, the one that kind of bends the wrist to the side? It will, of course, contribute to bending the wrist, as I mentioned. If you really wanna focus on growing this part of the forearm, the most sort of bottom outer side, which is the side that a lot of people care about, if you wanna be most specific to that muscle, you're gonna need to do that kind of deviation motion, almost like you're throwing a fishing line. Now, my number one, one option for this is actually to do it single arm with a rope. And the reason I like to do it single arm with a rope is because it's difficult to train that deviation motion on your shoulders and elbows if you're trying to do it with two arms at the same time. You would basically have to do like a triceps extension as you're trying to do the wrist motion. So with the single arm rope option, you can actually use a brace with your opposite hand and do the deviation motion that way. In addition, because you have the freedom to rotate your forearm as with the other option because you're holding a rope, you can play around with what wrist position will feel best for you. Even though it's single arm and it may take slightly more time, 
spine, you can simply just go back and forth between arms and do a working set on one side while the other side rests and then just flip flop it. It, it takes no extra time if you're just gonna be doing one of these forearm exercises or another. In addition, you can of course do this two arms at the same time. I don't prefer this option personally just because it's a little bit less stable, a little bit more awkward to coordinate. But if you wanna do that, you can simply just anchor a rope up high on a cable stack and do the wrist deviations that way. So unlike the wrist curl motion, this one has a little bit fewer options because doing it with free weights is a little bit clunky and you can't really do it with fixed implements like you can with the wrist curl. There's one other option that I think a lot of you will really enjoy that is super uncommon, which is just to perform the deviation with any kind of longer bar. And when you do it this way, you can basically just think about the same exact principle of just turning your wrist in that direction we've been talking about. And you can also easily slide your hand toward the middle or slide your hand away from the middle to make it easier when you slide your hand to the middle or to make it harder when you slide your hand away from the middle. Now, this might not be as practical for some of you just because of the limitation on equipment, but if you have something like a lat pull down bar, it's actually super easy to load and progress this motion through reps and through moving your hand away from the center over time. And with this option, you can think outside the box. You could also probably do it with something like an easy bar or something somewhat similar. Again, the important part is the principle. So you just need something that's pulling your wrist in this direction against which you create that sort of pinky downward motion. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you want to learn more from me, check out any of the links in the description. I have tons of courses, tons of programs, tons of eBooks, and a full exercise library with almost 300 full tutorials now. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.